So let's think about the next consequence. We can do something. For example, when you really want to do something against plastic on the oceans, yeah, uh, uh, eat oysters. Yeah. Each oyster has at least 1,500 pieces of plastic in it. Yeah. <laughs> because the oysters are filtering the water, yeah, 60 liters of water a day, and they take out the plastic. We find up to 40,000 pieces of plastic in such an oyster. So you e it's so easy to do circular economy. Yeah, it's just <laughs> eat oysters. Yeah. And it, it helps. You can drink champagne. If you drink champagne, you, it helps a lot because champagne can reduce your carbon footprint by three times. Because compared to Prosecco, the bubbles are much smaller. Yeah. <laughs> so I if you want to reduce your carbon footprint, you just drink champagne. There's, there's endless things you can do. We look at materials scarcity, but amazingly we look at the carbon dioxide problem, but the material side is far more critical. And by the way, carbon is a material as well, so it's a mismanagement of carbon and mismanagement of materials. We can do something. Yeah, we can grow biodiesel, for example, biogas. Can you imagine 20% of our agricultural land we use in Europe to grow uh, biofuel? Uh, How perverse. Yeah. Uh, when you grow one hectare of corn, you lose between 11 and 30 tons of topsoil per hectare a year. Yeah. <laughs> but two-thirds of the carbon is not in oil, it's in soil and vegetation. So <laughs> that just keeps us busy. It, it, we do more and more a type of ecologism. We pretend to do something, it doesn't help the ecology, but we keep busy. Yeah. So we, we are importing three million tons of palm oil from Indonesia and Malaysia for making biofuels in Europe. Yeah. One hectare of rainforest has 7,000 tons of carbon in it. One hectare of palm oil plantation yeah, has 60 tons of carbon. So we cut down the rainforest. So I talked to Mr. Barroso and he said, oh, uh, uh, Michael, I got the message. We will only take certified palm oil in the future. Yeah. <laughs> How stupid. <laughs> we let the Chinese cut down the old, the old, uh, uh, the young, uh, the rainforest because the old plantation is more efficient anyways. Yeah, so. He, just for, don't tell Mr. Cameron, uh, the euro coin is amazingly toxic. Yeah. So <laughs> when you, yeah, uh, 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 the, the, the euro, uh, the abrasion of nickel is 200 times higher than it's legal for any other product. Yeah. Yeah. And we didn't test any UK coins. But, <laughs> but it's amazing. And about 15% of the women suffer from a nickel allergy uh, because they're sweating and then cashiers and then they just put the metal dust in, in their neck and about 15%, only about 2% of the men. Yeah. So uh, we still sell lead oxide glasses here in the Netherlands, for example, and contaminate all our uh, glass recycling from that. Because of circular economy, we make things much worse. Yeah. The European Union is now banning 64 chemicals from children's toys yeah, instead of 39. It just keeps us busy. But in Mattel toys, we find between 500 and 700 dangerous chemicals. Yeah. So this is chemical harassment, this is child abuse, this is terrorism, because the baby didn't ask for the stuff and the children didn't ask for it. And because of recycling, we find far more soil uh, solvents in it. These are just 36 different types of solvents we find in such a children's toy. Yeah. Because, because of the recycling, they use the same solvents and mix them. Yeah. And then they make children's toys out of them. Yeah. So this is Homeland Security as well. Yeah. So we analyze all different types of things. You see the price X, for example, here, or McDonald's toys here. Yeah. McDonald's is one of the biggest companies selling toys now. Yeah. And so price X, they're called surprise X because they have surprisingly high lead concentrations in it, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's lead, it's thallium, it's antimony, it's cadmium, selenium, arsenic, nickel. That's never made for children. Yeah. So if you are not even ab able to make healthy stuff for children, if you are not even able to stop three million tons of palm oil, that shows that we really need to do something. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah, we say just keep us busy and pretend to do something. Yeah. Like socialism was <coughs> never social, ecologism doesn't help the ecology, it only keeps us busy. So this is why we talk about innovation. We, in no equal balance you find antimony, for example, when you look at PET bottles. Yeah. But it's leached out. You, in Coca-Cola, you have f up to 80 times more antimony in its legal in drinking water. Antimony is as toxic as arsenic. It's strong carcinogen. But it's legal because the drinking water limits are only for drinking water. Yeah. 
not for Coca-Cola, not for orange juice. Yeah? It's never made for that. Yeah? So, and because, so you see, for example, off casing from a shoe, and it's not because somebody, uh, yeah, it was a new shoe, yeah, so, yeah. It's never made for skin contact. And so I can give you more example. Here, for example, the worst of all the pigments is green. Yeah? When you take all the Carlsbergs and Becks and, and Heineken's, they're, they're never made for recycling. Yeah? The, the green is a, a copper containing, chlorine containing pigment. When we use a green, we always have to mix a yellow and a blue. When you do recycling of the stuff, you always contaminate the environment. It's never made, made for, for any type of recycling. So we make things free of, you know, for example, brake pack pads from Vauxhall, from Opel, from Volkswagen, from Ford. Yeah, that these brake pads are free of asbestos. Yeah. How nice. Yeah. The replacement is antimony sulfate, which is a much stronger carcinogen. <laughs> we invite you tonight for dinner and said, this yeah, yeah, is free of chicken, it doesn't help you at all. Yeah. So we need to define what we have. This is why materials are so key and why this library is so key. We positively need to define what we have. Don't make things free of. Yeah. And because, but you can do something. Yeah. There are 7,000 liters of warm water between these two different people. Adele compared to Patrick Stewart here. Yeah. So really, if you cut your hair shorter, it helps, yeah? That's why, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, bold helps most in yeah, that, yeah, so. <laughs> so. So everybody can do this, yeah? It's 7,000 liters of warm water. So this is where we are. We talk about I our aim is zero emission. We show a little baby and said, it's better you're not here. Yeah. That's the message behind it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And, and sure, we can do something. We can do be zero. Yeah. We now have our selfie generation and said, oh, you should be zero. <laughs> Nobody wants to be zero. We said, oh, in 2020, you should be 20% less evil. <laughs> <laughs> How funny. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I, I'm in, in Vietnam, Ho Chi Minh City. I leave the airport and the whole city is plastered with Accenture. These are 300,000 consultants how to get more out of the same resource, efficiency. Yeah. How funny, when I was a child, a cow was producing 5,000 liters of milk. Yeah. Today, in Netherlands, in Wageningen, we are up to, up to 12,000 liters of milk. Yeah. Should we squeeze another 1,000 liters out of this poor cow to be more efficient? Yeah. Or should we grow another pair of legs for this poor monster sheep? Yeah. No, <laughs> it's not about efficiency. The question is not how can we feed people in the same way yeah, uh, with hamburgers every day. No, we need to say what is healthy nutrition. Yeah. So what is the right thing instead of optimizing wrong things? Yeah. Sure, but this is where we are. We feel so terrible that we say, oh, the greenest house is the one which never gets built. Also, sustainability is booking your customer. It's healthy. If you don't buy it, it's even better. Yeah. And by the way, sustainability is bloody boring. Yeah. Yeah. Annabelle, if I ask you, how's your relationship with your husband? What do you say? Sustainable, yeah. <laughs> 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 and I said, Annabelle, <laughs> that doesn't help. <laughs> so the question is, are we too many? We can do something if we want to minimize our carbon footprint. For example, if you take an airplane uh, from Heathrow into, L uh, into New York, yeah, and everybody first takes a little tablet to empty his or her digestion system, yeah, it saves about five tons of kerosene. Yeah. Just if you just get out what you have in your body, yeah, you, you can reduce the weight of the airplane so strongly. Yeah. And um, a lot of people fly from London just into New York for shopping. If they would fly naked, yeah, then they, they could save another two tons of kerosene. Yeah. So everybody can do something. For example, in a building, if you want to mi minimize your carbon footprint, yeah, the easiest thing is to take the elevator. Yeah. It takes five times yeah, less carbon yeah, uh, to take the elevator than taking the stairs because our perverse agriculture really takes 10 it takes really 10 calories of energy for one calorie of food yeah. this is pretty stupid yeah. you can hear this is a, uh, that's the benefit from glass recycling yeah, so, uh, so um, it is amazing so when you take the elevator it only takes two calories so if, if you want to minimize your carbon footprint by five times yeah, you can just always take the elevator. Yeah. And then you die a little earlier, you can minimize your carbon footprint even more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, so there's endless opportunities. So the key question behind it, are we too many people on this planet? When we think we are too many, yeah, 
then it, it, we let people die when they come over the Mediterranean Sea. We do this on purpose because our environmental debate generated these feelings, we are too many on this planet and so it's better we are not here. You know? So we let them die because we think we are, we, we are a burden for the planet so we can ease this burden if they die, if, if they drown. Yeah? Otherwise we wouldn't behave like that. Yeah? So our environmental debate led to this feeling yeah, we are too many. So are we really too many? If you look at the biomass of ants, yeah, yeah, then you see the biomass of these tiny little insects is about four times bigger than of humans. Yeah. And because these ants, yeah, these pigs, are never taking elevators, yeah, they're always taking the stairs, yeah, so they're working physically much harder and they, they equal about, uh, yeah, it, it, they only live three to six months. So it's the equivalent of calorie consumption about 30 billion people. So we are not too many. We are just too stupid. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. The difference between them and us is we are making waste. Yeah? The rainforest in Brazil only exists because of ants. Yeah? Because they always put the nutrients back yeah? and make them accessible. Yeah? So look at a tree in spring. No reduction, no avoidance, no minimization. Everything is beneficial, not minimizing your footprint. So how should we, yeah, but this is where we are, we talk about the, the aim is zero. This is why we tell our customer not to buy our products. Yeah? This is efficiency. Yeah. But why don't we look for different things? Why don't we say, look, we already reached 10% with what we want to do, but the more you buy in 2015, in 2020, in 2025, the more you buy, the quicker we can change the company. Yeah? Now the customer becomes a change agent. Yeah, because he helps with his purchasing to change the company. <coughs> so it makes sense to reduce the use of oil and gas. Yeah? It's just stupid to put in the atmosphere. But what, where is our beneficial footprint? Yeah? For being less bad, we have far too many people on this planet. But for being good? This is why we talk about innovation. This is why we talk about a beneficial footprint. So let's have our footprint, a little retention room, yeah, along the, when you walk along the River Thames. We took a northern approach here. Yeah? You know this definition from the Brundtland Commission? Yeah. To fulfill the needs of the present generation without compromising the needs of the future? How sad. <laughs> Think about you come home and tell your child, I'm not compromising your needs of the future. Yeah. How sad. I want to be good for the future, isn't it? Yeah. So think about you come home and say, oh, I'm child neutral today. Yeah. <laughs> so how stupid. So when you're in Sweden, your footprint is damaging. That's why people try to minimize their footprint. But when you walk along the River Thames, yeah, you generate a little retention room. Every footprint means a space yeah, where the water can collect, so which then you prevent flooding with a retention room. So why don't you have a big space, a big footprint, but make it a wetland, a beneficial footprint. So then we don't need to tell people stories. We don't need to <coughs> tell them lies. We can tell them, hey, I'm not that smart really. Yeah? This is where I am. Yeah? I'm personal, I'm biting fingernails, so I'm not really that great. Yeah? I'm, I'm only taking warm showers, yeah? so I'm, I don't do any sports yet. So, uh, so I just, I'm mediocre, so I don't need to tell that I'm so smart. I can just say, here I am, but here we want to be. Then we're on a journey together. Yeah? And then we can do innovation. Isn't it amazing? We want to do triple bottom line. How oh, funny. It's about a triple top line. You want to be good for economy, good for society, and good for the environment. Yeah? And that's a different attitude. And sure, we can look at them and we can analyze the different chemicals, we can do corporate social responsibility. But the key question is not optimizing wrong things, not of efficiency, but effectiveness. And think about everything in life what matters. Yeah? Think about falling in love with somebody efficiently. Yeah? Think about Mozart or Handel I efficient, yeah, yeah. The whole fireworks music in one tone, <coughs> efficient, isn't it great? <laughs> Tonight we will have a nice uh, dinner. It will be one tablet with some London flavor and a glass of water. Very efficient. So everything in life which really matters is not efficient. Why do you want to be eco-efficient? In the Netherlands, people understand it easily. Yeah, D flowers. When your wife is really angry about your yeah, 50 roses, completely inefficient, but very effective. Yeah, can tell you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Or think about Mozart yeah, or uh, Van Gogh. Yeah. Efficient? No. The first dot com? A lipstick. Yeah. Uh, 
A woman eats about 6.3 kilograms of lipstick during her lifetime. <laughs> uh, completely inefficient, but very effective. Just look around here, you see it. Yeah. <laughs> so this is why you can now say, what is the future? And, so, and this is part three, yeah, where we can demonstrate things. 